Welcome to our new series, a new series about Jeremiah, a relevant prophet. As we look at this very relevant prophecy, we're going to be comparing many times Judah, God's people, with God's people today, the church. When I speak of God's people today, when I speak of, when, when I compare God's people then to God's people now, I'm not comparing God's people then, the nation of Judah, to any nation today like the United States or Canada or any other nation. Because God's people is beyond national borders. God's people is comprised of all those around the world who are followers of God in Christ. Those who are Christians. Those who are part of his body, his kingdom, his family, his church. So the comparison is not the nation of Israel to the United States. The comparison is the nation of Judah to God's people today, the church. So as we do that, I want us to hold that thought in our mind because the prophecy that he gives is relevant to the church. Now, when it's relevant to the church, it's relevant to the individuals within the church and it's relevant to the church as it sits within the context of society, whatever society that is. So the prophecies apply to Judah, and some of the application applies to the church and God's people today. So as we go through this, keep that in mind as we study this relevant prophet. Let's go and let's meet Jeremiah. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anoth, or Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of Yahweh came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. And it came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the exile of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now, let's stop there for a moment. This is the setting. Jeremiah is prophesying during the days of the last few kings of Judah, just before they go into and when they go into exile into Babylon. So Judah is not always following God, and they are going against God, and this is their punishment. This is what's happening. So the prophecies are going to deal a lot with the problems and the struggles that God's people are having following him. And that's why it's a relevant prophet. Let's keep reading. Now the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the innermost parts, I knew you. And before you came out from the womb, I set you apart. I have given you as a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Lord Yahweh, behold, I do not know how to speak, because I am a youth. But Yahweh said to me, Do not say I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver them, to deliver you, declares Yahweh. Then Yahweh sent forth his hand and touched my mouth, and Yahweh said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot, to tear down, to cause to perish, to pull down, to build, and to plant. Jeremiah has a call. Jeremiah has a mission. And in Jeremiah's case, it is a specific call from God. God said, I knew you before you were born. I have a plan for you. And this is one of those rare instances where we do read of a specific plan of a specific person from God. Jeremiah, it had, <coughs> excuse me, Jeremiah has a daunting task. He's going to speak to a people who think they have it all together. He's going to speak to a people who think God is on their side and tell them that there are some things that they need to change. And so he says, I've set you, I've appointed you this day to uproot, to tear down, to cause to perish, and to pull down, to build, and to plant. Two thirds of what Jeremiah is going to say is going to be negative if this holds true. Um, the majority of what he says is going to hurt people's ears and their pride. But in order to build people up, in order to encourage people, in order to help people grow, sometimes they need to be pruned. 
And so there's a lot of pruning that's going to go on in Jeremiah's prophecy. And as we do that, many of these things we will look at in our lives today and say, well, do I need to be pruned? Do I need to hear this hard message in my life? Does the church need to hear this message and be cut back so that we can bloom again? Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for your love and for your care. Father, as we spend time in the next few months in the book of Jeremiah, as we look at this prophecy and the prophecies and the dealings that he has with your people, for the help us to find the, the principle and the practical application that, that we can apply to our lives so that we can be better servants of yours, so that we can not be like Judah and find ourselves in exile, but we can be your people, united and working for you to spread your kingdom to the world around. Father, thank you for your kingdom. Thank you for Christ coming to establish that kingdom here on earth. And Father, we look forward to the day when that kingdom is translated to heaven. Father, we pray that we are found faithful as your children in Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for allowing me to join you as we spend time in God's Word. I do look forward to these. I'm looking forward to our time in the book of Jeremiah. I hope you are as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.